Wings of Fire, The Lost Air. A Nightwing Guide to the Dragons of Pyrea. Mudwings. Description, thick, armored, brown scales, sometimes with amber and gold underscales. Large, flat heads with nostrils on top of the snout. Abilities. Can breathe fire, if warm enough. Hold their breath up for up to an hour. Blend into large mud puddles, usually very strong. Queen, Queen Moorhen. Alliances, currently allied with Burn and the Sky Wings in a great war. Sandwings, description, pale gold or white scales, the color of desert sand, poisonous barbed tail, forked black tongues. Abilities, can survive a long time without water, poison enemies with their tips of their tails like scorpions, bury themselves for camouflage in the desert sand, breathe fire. Queen, since the death of Queen Oasis, the tribe is split between three rivals for the throne, sisters Burn, Blister, and Blaze. Alliances, Burn fights alongside Sky Wings and Mud Wings. <clears throat> Blister is allied with the Sea Wings and Blaze has the support of most Sand Wings as well as an alliance with the Ice Wings. Sky Wings, description, red, gold, or orange scales, enormous wings. Abilities, powerful fighters and flyers can breathe fire. Queen, Queen Scarlet. Alliances, currently allied with Burn and the Mud Wings in the Great War. Sea Wings, description, blue or green or aquamarine scales, webs between their claws, gills on their necks, glow in the dark stripes on their tails, snouts, underbellies. Abilities, can breathe underwater, see in the dark, create huge waves with one splash of their powerful tails, excellent swimmers. Queen, Queen Coral, alliances, currently allied with Blister in the Great War. Rain Wings, description, scales constantly shift colors, usually bright like birds of paradise, prehensile tails, abilities, can camouflage their scales to blend into their surroundings, use their prehensile tails for climbing, no known natural weapons, queen, queen dazzling, alliances not involved in the Great War. Ice Wings, Description, silvery scales like the moon or pale blue like ice, ridged claws to grip the ice, forked blue tongues, tails narrow to a whip thin end. Abilities, can withstand sub-zero temperatures and bright light, exhale a deadly freezing breath. Queen, Queen Glacier. Alliances, currently allied with Blaze and most of the sand wings in the Great War. Night Wings, description, Purplish black scales and scattered silver scales on the underside of their wings, like a night sky full of stars. Forked black tongues. Abilities can breathe fire, disappear into dark shadows, read minds, foretell the future. Queen, a closely guarded secret. Alliances, too mysterious and powerful to be part of the war. The Dragonette Prophecy. When the war has lasted 20 years, the dragonets will come. When the land is soaked in blood and tears, the dragonets will come. Find the sea wing egg of deepest blue. Wings of night shall come to you. The largest egg in mountain high will give to you the wings of sky. For wings of earth search through the mud for an egg the color of dragon blood. And hidden alone from the rival queens, the sand wing ed egg awaits unseen. Of three queens who blister and blaze and burn, two shall die and one shall learn. If she bows to a fate that is stronger and higher, she'll have the power of wings of fire. Five eggs to hatch on brightest night, five dragons born to end the fight. Darkness will rise to bring the light. The dragonettes are coming. Prologue. Underwater, Webs couldn't hear the screams of dying dragons. Underwater, the battle was as far away as the three moons. Fire couldn't touch him. Talons couldn't scar him. The blood washed away from his claws. Underwater, he was safe. Safe and a coward. Still better than loyal, brave, and dead. Webs shuddered awake. A catfish was staring at him blankly. Its whiskery, whiskery tendrils drifted in the current. 
The expression on its face said, why is there a dragon sleeping on my river stones? Webbs ate it, and that made him feel a little better. The Talons of Peace must know what's happened to the dragons by now, he thought. They have spies in the Skywing Palace. They don't need to hear it from me. The other Talons did not need him to stand up in front of them and say, we failed. But where could he go? He was already hiding from his own tribe, the Sea Wings. Did he have to hide from the Talons of Peace for the rest of his life as well? Webbs paddled to the surface of the river and cautiously poked his head out. It was dark with the, with the claws of the clouds mountains blocking most of the moonlight like vast shadowy teeth. He'd been swimming downriver for days. The Sky Kingdom was far away now. The Sky Kingdom and the five dragonettes he'd sworn to protect. Webbs dragged his long aching body out of the water and took three steps into the forest before he noticed the dark shapes waiting for him. He spun around, but a new dragon loomed out of the river to block his escape. Black spiral patterns marked his green scales and his teeth gleamed in the moonlight. Webbs, said the other sea wing in a pleasant voice, I thought you would never wake up. Webbs drew his talons through the riverbank mud. Nautilus, he said. He hated the tremble of fear in his voice. I have important news for the talons. You don't say, said Nautilus. I suppose you got lost on your way to the usual meeting place. So we thought we'd come find you, said one of the dark figures in a voice like icicles dripping. Cirrus, Webbs thought. It was never a good sign when Cirrus, the ice wing, appeared. The sky wings found our cave, Webbs said. Just tell the truth, it's not your fault. And Queen Scarlet took the dragonettes. Yes, said Nautilus dryly. We gathered that much from how she's practically been standing on the tallest mountain shouting, I have the dragonettes of destiny. They're all mine. Tell us everything, Cirrus hissed. How did they find you? Well, Webb said slowly, it started when two of the dragonettes tried to run away. Maybe three. He wasn't sure where Glory had been on that night. He could only find Starflight and Sunny. But he knew she couldn't have gone into the river with Tsunami and Clay. Why would they run away? Nautilus asked sharply. What did you do to them? Webbs felt his gills flare. We kept them alive, he snarled, and trapped them underground and changed Tsunami and planned to kill Glory because she wasn't part of the prophecy. But what choice did we have? Surely he caught the runaways and brought them back, said a voice in the shadows. Webbs recognized Crocodile, a mudwing new to the towns of peace. His hopes rose. In his few meetings with her, she'd been sympathetic. Perhaps he had been one ally here. Er, Webb said, no, not exactly. They kind of came back on their own to get the others. He cleared his throat. We weren't expecting that. Kestrel thought they'd be long gone as soon as they hit the sky. It sounds as if they felt like prisoners, Nautilus said in his soft hiss. You told us to keep them underground, Webbs protested. This was a decision made by all of the Talons. But we wanted them agreeable, not rebellious, said Nautilus. That was the entire point, wasn't it? A murmur went around the circle of dragons. There were seven, including Nautilus, as far as the Webbs could tell. He wondered if he could fight his way past seven dragons. It wasn't our fault, he murmured. Maybe there's something wrong with them. What does this have to do with the Sky Wings? Cirrus hissed. The Sky Wings followed Clay and Tsunami back to the cave. Webbs explained, that's how Queen Scarlet found us. We tried to fight back, but she killed Dune and took Kestrel along with the Dragonettes. Will she make them fight in her arena? Asked Crocodile. Can they win? They're only Dragonettes, Cirrus growled. Of course they won't survive the arena. Surely she'll spare the Sky Wing at least, Crocodile said. Webbs flinched. He had never been brave enough to confess to the Talons of Peace that they'd lost their Skywing Dragonette and replace it with a Rainwing. But now that the Dragonettes were out in the world, everyone would know soon. You know that Queen's, you know what Queen Scarlet did to all the Skywing Dragonettes who hatched at the brightest night? Cirrus hissed. Mercy is not exactly in her nature. Webbs raised his head and looked around at the eyes that glittered in the dark. Can't we go get them? He asked. Maybe if all the Talons attacked at once, his voice faltered. Who was he kidding? He wasn't about to go rushing into the Skywing Palace to die, and he was closer to the Dragonettes than any of the Talons who hadn't even met them. 
all the talons, Cirrus hissed. 40 dragons against the 100 Skywing Palace guards? A brilliant plan. No wonder we left the dragonettes in your capable claws. His diamond-shaped head darted up and snapped a bit out of the air. Tiny bones crunched in his teeth. A suicide mission may not be necessary, Nautilus said. Something happened in the Skywing Palace yesterday. We don't have any clear reports yet, but one spy said he thought Queen Scarlet was dead, killed by the dragonettes. Webbs flared his wing in surprise. By my dragonettes, he asked. Maybe they have a talent for escaping, Nautilus said. Although another spy was sure they all died trying to fight their way out. Webb's stomach felt as if it were full of poisonous jellyfish. The dragonettes couldn't be dead. Not after all he'd given up for the sake of the prophecy and to save my own skills, a small voice whispered inside him. If they are loose in Pyrea, how do you suggest we find them? Nautilus asked. Non-suicidal suggestions only, please. Well, for us, you may feel free to kill yourself whenever it's convenient. I don't know, Webbs admitted. He had no idea where the dragonettes might go. He didn't understand why they would want to be on their own, cut off from their protectors. The worst 10 days of his life were the ones between the battle when, where, he had been, where he had abandoned his queen and the day the Talons had found him, alone with no tribe to support them and no Talons to protect them. How would the dragonettes survive? If we can't, can't get past the dragonettes back, Nautilus mused, I suppose we'll have to consider our backup plan. He scratched his gills thoughtfully. What backup plan, Webbs asked. The one you don't get to know about, Sira said. But, but we have to get back. You have to get them back, Webb said. They're the dragonettes. They're the only ones who can stop the war. Have a little faith in the prophecy, Webbs, Nautilus said. Yes, don't worry, Crocodile said reassuringly. The Talons of Peace wouldn't put all their eggs in one nest. It's a good backup plan. Webbs looked from one shadowed face to the next. Apart from Crocodile, he saw nothing friendly in the eyes staring at him. I don't understand, he said. Was there another prophecy he didn't know about? Of course, Nautilus said. This means you would be a problem. Webbs barely had time to say what before Cirrus was suddenly on his back, pinning him to the ground. His wounds from the Skywing soldiers flared up with bright new pain. One wing was twisted behind him, and he could feed the I he could feel the ice wings serrated claws digging into his scales. What are you doing? Webbs yelped. I'm one of you. I've been with the Talons of the Peace for seven years. And you failed us, Cirrus hissed. Now, now, Nautilus said, then paused. No, that's not fair. That's no, that's fair. I'm going to dig your heart out and feed it to the fish, Cirrus growled. Won't that be ironic, Webbs thought gloomily of the fish he'd just eaten. But we're the dragons of peace, he said. His teeth gritted with pain. If we kill each other, aren't we as bad as burn and blister and blaze? Sorry, Webbs, Nautilus said. Peace is more important than any one dragon. And you would disrupt our backup plan. We're doing this for our, our own, for your own good, for the prophecy, for peace. Webbs heard the horrible echo of his own words. The same thing he'd said to the dragonettes whenever they complained about life under the mountain. It's for your own good. Peace is the most important thing. He would believed it when he said it. No doubt Nautilus did too. Nautilus gestured for, with one talon. Cirrus, rip out his heart. The jaws of the ice wings sprang open and Cirrus flung Webbs down onto his back. His icicle sharp claws flexed, ready to re tear into Webbs underbelly. Suddenly, Crocodile cannoned into him, knocking Cirrus into the undergrowth. Webbs didn't hesitate. He flipped upright and shot into the sky as fast as his wings could carry him. He heard shouts as Crocodile struck out at the dragons around her, and he felt a stab of guilt. Should he stay to help her fight? But why go back for death when he had a chance at life? He heard wing beats behind him, and he flew harder. He imagined Cirrus breathing down his tail, or Nautilus hissing closer and closer, but it was Crocodile's voice who called to him. Fly, Webbs, she cried. I've knocked them out. They didn't see that coming, huh? Thank you, Webbs called back, twisting to see her heavy brown shape soaring behind him. Where will you hide, she asked. He shook his head. I have no idea. I've heard there's a dragon in Jade Mountain who might. You should go home, she said, tilting her wings to swoop under him. From what I hear, Queen Coral is in a merciful mood these days. The thrill that ran through Webbs from horns to tail nearly took his breath away. Home? Back to the sea? After all these years? Is it possible? 
She'll never forgive me. Not after everything I did, he said. It's not just that. I deserted her during a battle. She must know I was the one who stole her egg for the prophecy. You might be surprised, said Crocodile. Isn't she supposed to be one of the greatest queens in history? That's what all the sea wings scrolls say. Perhaps she'll forgive you. Why not take the chance if it means you can go home again? Webbs was silent. One of the moons was rising, shimmering off his blue-green scales. From up here, he could see the ocean far off in the distance, but it seemed as unreachable as the moon itself. Up to you, Crocodile said, banking away from him. I'm just telling you what I've heard. Good luck either way. Good luck to you too, Webbs called. She vanished into the trees and he wondered where she'd go now. He missed the sea with every scale of his body. He missed the palaces, the cur currents, the whale songs, the feasts, the gardens, the other sea wings. If the talons are done with me, if I promise her I'll be brave this time, maybe I can go home again.